Hello, hello, hello. This is Nadine. Oh, how are you doing today? Uh, it's a beautiful Super Bowl Sunday. Are y'all ready? Are y'all ready? Uh, here's the news. Don got a flat tire, is on his way in. But until then, you've got me. How you doing? So if you are watching, I got some music playing in the background. I'm trying a little something different. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Let me try something else. All right. So Black History Month, I use this application card, artlist.io, so that I can get licensed to use the music. Sometimes if you see our commercials, you will see that. I'm playing some music in the background, um, in the background of the promo commercial-ish things. So, you know, I'm having fun with it, you know, throwing out a little bit of my skills for everyone. Um, but right now uh, is Black History Month. And what we got going on is they're featuring uh, artists uh, in relation to Black History Month. So I'm showing this to you because a number of you may be doing other things and you want to put some music behind. I do, I'm not a uh, affiliate of Artlist.io, but I like to share the things that are working for me. Yes, for me. And it's working for me, it's working for y'all. So the artist is Furry. P-H-U-R-Y. I'll go ahead and share the screen real quick uh, on my site. Uh, let's see here. All right, so you'll see there, here's the brother. Uh, the artist is furry. And then down underneath, there's a, a, a list of, of songs that he has on here. Um, jazz, hip hop, lounge. I kind of like it. Um, there's another thing that some folks use. They, they call it lo-fi. You go on YouTube and it's just music in the background. Sometimes they have animation or just uh, uh, a, a static photo. But um, so until Don gets here, I'm going to be playing this licensed music that I can use. Um, I've saved it. Usually you download it, like I can go over here and uh, download and it will download onto my desktop and I could use it for other things. But um, now we're going to play Lullaby. Um, so if anyone's watching, you let me know if you can hear it. I'm going to try to test things out in a second. We've been drawing a ram, working on a ram. So that's been kind of fun. Let's see here, hold up there, okay. I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit. Hopefully you can hear me well. Again, my name is Nadine O, and you are in our Sunday pop-up art session. Um, I was kind of looking at my ram and while we're waiting for Don to get here, oh my hair, my hair is an art form, y'all. Um, grab your coffee, grab your tea, whatever you're drinking, pull out your ram. We're going to continue with that. I'm kind of looking at it, saying to myself, I'm not really liking the neck. I think the neck, I, I, I think I got it off a little bit. And, uh, or this is too short, or I don't know, something isn't looking right. So I, I, I don't know what to do to fix it, but I'm not, ah, I think this needs to be maybe higher. Um, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe this needs to be up like that. Maybe that's subtle adjustment. Let's see. Remember, perfection is a lie. Repetition is the truth. It is the way. I hope everyone's doing good. 
I got a little toot toot. Oh, is this Don? Don might be joining us rather soon. Um, he may have to get a few things set up. Hello, the doorbell rang. So we're just going to continue while he's getting set up. He's going to get his lights and everything and whatnot together. Make sure he can hear me um, or hear us. I am going to, there's a couple of things I usually do in the background when Don is talking. Uh, to make sure everything is okay. Oh, yeah. I hope y'all can hear the music because the music is just bumping. I mean, it's bumping, y'all. How y'all feeling today? I'm going to pop that in there. Good morning. Good morning. How are you, Don? You made it. Hey, I'm all right. Had a small little incident on the bike. That's okay. Aww. We good to go. We got it. Yeah, yeah, I was out riding this morning to get to the studio, everybody. And uh, we seemed like we ran over one of those heroin needles. Oh. Yeah, you know, I'm out here in Kensington, the studio spaces. So caught me out there. I was like around about, mm, let's see, I was around about Gerard and Frankfurt. Okay, okay. And I was riding up uh, Frankfurt, just about to stop to get an egg sandwich. And Ooh. all of a sudden. Wow. It's like, that's oh, no man. Fun. That's no fun. No fun, but I was lucky enough to five bus runs down that way and a 25. So I just okay. had to ride the bus up. That's why I said, give me that half an hour. Cause I had to ride the bus up and then, you know, do the little walk to the studio and put the bike up and all that stuff. Him and Han get mad about that and then come online with you. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I got you, buddy. I just went on and just went live. I don't know if, can you hear any music? No, I can't hear any music just yet. Hmm. I want to test. I'm testing something. So if there's no music, then I did something wrong. Check the music out. Yeah. Can you hear it now? No, it might be in the waiting room. Oh. Yo, that That's means y'all got. Know. Yeah. yeah you, that can, mean... you can play music in the waiting room. Oh. Well, that's going to be something I'm going to have to do. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, check it out. You should be able to see where you can play music in the in the uh, waiting room for everybody if you wanted to in the, in the room in the back. For everybody okay. to wait to get put. Okay. Got it. All mm -hmm. right. Cool. Uh. The other way where you can play it live where it doesn't cause an issue, but then I was having an issue that way, so that's why I started playing it in the background in the studio itself. Got you. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I could get one of those that. little portable. Yeah, get a little portable speaker. Oh no, I one got the speaker, but I I get a little bit of a hum. So I got I got I think I got a grounding issue. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So okay. um, um, but um, sorry y'all. I thought I had a little bit of pleasing music there. Um, oh, for those. Good watching this in the in the rebroadcast I was talking a little about the music how I use the promo music let me see something let me see something 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 all right so, what's that oh okay yeah Okay, got you, got you. Um, yeah, so I was trying to use license-free music uh, so that we don't have any issues with it being um, with YouTube and whatnot. 
Well, what normally happens is if you play that low and we're talking over it, it's that it doesn't cause an issue because mm -hmm. that's what happened when I was playing it with you in the background before, and I turned it down, and then we didn't have those issues. Mm -hmm. It can't be the top stuff. Gotcha. It has to be yeah. true to me, and our voices have to be over top. Um, I think they, they did get me a couple times, and I oh, had to did? tell them, yep, they got me a couple times with the YouTube video, and I had to uh, oh, you know different. tell them the tell them the source. Yeah, you, YouTube is going to do it automatically off the uh, algorithm. Right. So as soon as the music comes up and it can identify the music, like like five seconds of it or three seconds, some supposedly, it's yeah. a wrap. They're gonna, they're gonna flag your your video on YouTube. Yep. On Zoom though, you can play stuff in the background and just talk. Now, right. when you transfer it to YouTube and stuff, that's where our problem is coming in. Right. Yeah. It's it's definitely uh, a YouTube thing. Mm -hmm. And you know, I wonder. Here you go. I turned on the speaker. This guy's pretty good. It's yeah. yeah. But, um. Anyway. It yeah, but the problem is, is I have to keep my mic open. Sometimes I have to close the mic, so that's something to think about and to make sure the levels yeah, yeah. are okay. Um. Yeah. Um. We always, we're always looking for ways to make it more relaxing and entertaining. Maybe the introduction of some um, background music or whatever. I'm going to take this down real low and I'll kind of keep an eye on it. Um, okay. Um, Turn mine off. Uh, this artist is Furry, P-H-U-R-Y. Um, we're featuring it from um, a subscription uh, that I have with artlist.io. For any of y'all folks that put stuff up on social media, want to put some music in the background and not get um, flagged, they'll still try to flag you, but then you have to go and say, no, I have a license and it's with this company and then, then you'll be all right, but you might have to do that. So there's the little things that you have to do uh, working with uh, social media and other uh, platforms. Looking at that too, Nadine, you mm -hmm. also can go to Google and uh, Google has a section in there where you can uh, download uh, with uh, copyright, no, no copyright issues. Yes. It got to be for free. Right. You don't have to pay. So I use that site a lot. And there's a couple other sites that's like got shareware that you can use too as well, mm -hmm. where that doesn't happen as well. Yeah, the only thing you got to, and that's great. That is a great option for people. Um, when you pay for paid ads, you got to make sure that you have the right to use it for commercial purposes. That's the only, that, that's the only uh, thing if you take it a step further. You know, you're trying to make money to keep the organization going, you know, yeah. take it into that round. And you know what? This is what I've learned from you, Don. And I know we're going to get right. We're going to get right bumping back into where we were. Is I realized some things were, were not proportioned right. And I'm trying to fix it. <laughs> well, let's not look at it at the word proportion. Let's just look it at the word edges. Remember? Okay. So okay. If, if you look at the edges of the photo and start to compare and contrast. Now, this is what I mean, everybody. Say, for instance, we're drawing the section of the ear, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going I'm to walk the camera into where the ear is. All right. Say, for instance, we're drawing that ear like that. We're starting there you would look at the photograph and see where the actual ear is, right? Now, when you made the shape for the ear, you're saying that's the ear. So now you got to look at the photo and look across horizontally mm -hmm. to see what aligns with that. Mm -hmm. You have to look down from the edge of the ear and see what aligns with that. You mm -hmm. see? The whole key to the suggestion that I'm trying to give everybody is it's based upon looking at how edges overlap 
bunk next to one another and sit next to one another. Meaning that from the edge of the eye, you would have to look from the top of the eye and look over. And then now you would look at the photograph and compare what you have to the photo, not trying to be perfect. You're trying to say, okay, I put the ear here. What is it aligned with? Then when I see what it's aligned with, oh, that's why I got to have the space behind the ear. Oh, that's why the ear has to be below the eye because it's that much below the eye in the photograph. You see, it's just a switching off of the right and wrong mechanism. Let's say it that way. You're not looking to say right and wrong. You're looking for comparison. And then comparison doesn't mean right nor wrong. It just means you're comparing. That's it. The shape can be similar. The shape can be smack dead on either which way. All you're looking at is that edge that you made. And then now you're seeing how you're going to align your eye the same way the photo is. There is no precise, precise, how would you say, methodology other than the scaling process, which is the golden section. You know, when you see everybody has the grid all over their paper, and then you have a copy of the photograph, and then you have to have uh, a gridding system on that. Then you would have to do the one-to-one -one ratio or the one-to-two ratio, however your ratio is to enlarge it or to reduce it. So that's why I try to tell people, hey, don't look at this perfection idea so big because if you want to really be what they call perfect or photo real, we would have to do the grid. And then now everybody would hate me and hate mm -hmm. you and hate everything. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you see? Right. But if you look at the edges, how edges are aligned. Let's see, do I have a ruler here in front of me so I can do it even easier that way? Hold on a second, Nadine. Let me get my ruler. Or get my T-square right now. See, in my studio, I'm not just a painter, everybody. I'm an illustrator, you know, and I'm whatever is needed. So you see that, Nadine? Look. Mm -hmm. See how I'm looking across from the bottom of the eye? Yeah. So you would look across from the bottom of the eye, just like that, horizontally, to see what aligns with it, horizontally speaking, on that horizontal axis. Mm -hmm. As you're going down, you're looking to see how things align. You see? And mm -hmm. once you do that and then compare it to the photograph, you'll see how much closer you'll get by hand. It's just a switching off of the mechanism of wanting to be right and wrong. You just need to be in comparison and contrast. Doesn't mean you're right nor wrong. Look, if I look down from the edge of the eye, things are going to align, you see? If you mm -hmm. look from the edge of the ruler, or the T-square that I have in my hand. Mm -hmm. You look from the edge of the front of the eye, it's gonna align with something, I mean, vertically, true vertical. Mm -hmm. It's gonna align with something. You're looking at the photograph to see all of that. When you have areas where you can't see that, then you're depending upon the horizontal to get that local area. And then now you can use things like an idea of using the eye as a measurement, things like this, on the photograph to be able to strategize to say how much real space is there. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to ask everybody, is that a guesstimation? Sure, yes, I'll say it. Yes, it's a guesstimation. You trust it in your hand. You see? And then once you do this, you everybody sees every week it's, it's going to work because you're human. And now this is what I mean by you being human because if this stuff didn't work, you wouldn't be able to wake up in the morning and wipe your face. Mm -hmm. Think about it. If you went to bed and you was looking up at the ceiling, the ceiling was the ceiling and the floor was the floor. Mm -hmm. Then you wake up the next morning, the ceiling is the, 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 the ceiling is the floor and the floor is the ceiling. You're not going to get out of bed. Yeah. You see? So this is how important line, shape, form, light, and surface is. Mm -hmm. Like, these are the five things that you look for every day, all day. You see? See how you just calm down? Like, look, if you look inside the space of the horn, the negative space, people like to use that word, which is in this area right here. 
Yeah, I was There's trying to see that. Things in between the ear and that horn. You see, the horn is touching the ear right at the tip, yeah. right below the tip of the ear. You see, when you start looking like this around the edges of things and then looking horizontally and vertically from every little point, it can get that deep for you. And then that'll help you more with placement than trying to, how would you say, scale it up from trying to go to the photograph like this. And that's what some people do. And they just can't get past it. Uh, in my class this weekend, I had to show people that, no, you, you don't want to do that. And then they have this great urge to want to be perfect all of a sudden because of this computer. I'm telling you, everybody, take your time. Really look at how things associate to one another. That's the Newton thing, you know what I mean? Relativity, you know? Relativity was proven by, I believe, an a, a, a individual from Africa, West Africa, and it's called Gagat, God Almighty Unifying uh, Theorem. Yeah, no, God Almighty Grand Unifying Theorem. There you go. That's what it's called. I forget the gentleman's name, but it's been a proven fact. So. We have relativity proven. How is that proven? It's proven based upon how things associate to one another, how things sit next to one another. You see, the things on the left can tell you what's on the right. The things on the right can tell you what's on the left. The more you look, the more you see. Like you can see that that eye is right where the ear opening is. Mm -hmm. and and then the brow of the goat is up higher where the ear is, up high, you see? But if you see the dark spot in the opening, the, the base of the opening where it's touching the side of the skull, you can see that opening there is in alignment horizontally with the eye. Mm -hmm. You see that? So then yeah. automatically, you see that, that's going to make the space for the brow. No matter mm -hmm. what you got the brow looking like, that space is going to be there because you took it into consideration based upon looking at edges, everybody. You know, so I know we started off late, everyone, and we just jumped in the way that we, we normally do. We, we're very impulsive, so I'm glad Nadine is like me, impulsive. Yeah. <laughs> we jump right in. So everybody, this is what it is. You just jump right in and go. But the main thing we're saying to you guys is, Look at edges. Look at how edges overlap. Look at how they cross one another. Look at how they sit next to one another. And look to the extreme edge of each shape that you make. You know, the extreme edge is what we call what? A contour line or a contour edge. You know how you used to put your hand up like this and do the turkey drawing with your fingers, everybody? Yeah hand there and you would put the pencil around your hand and then you would make it into a turkey put the waddle on the bottom you know what I mean and everybody would walk around the room gobble 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 you know what I mean so right. you know yeah so it's the same thing except for now you're not tracing your hand you're looking at an item and you're trying to make your shapes match that mm-hmm you know, it's a comparison. Once again, it's not about being perfect. Could you say it's about being exact? Yeah, I can say that. But even being exact doesn't mean you're wrong nor right. It just means your placement has the timing that's needed. Mm -hmm. You see, I wouldn't overemphasize the darkness on that edge of the ear there. Because if you look at the photograph, you see there's a certain difference between dark and light yeah no i'm trying to get rid of the bad uh, not the bad lines but i'm moving i'm adjusting <laughs> i'm just why don't, I, you smudge it? why don't you smudge it instead of placing a line oh, that's okay. where we're at now that's you're in the smudging because now when you add it on you, you're looking at that darkness there yeah so you gotta look at the darkness that's there right yeah, because I got to adjust my eye now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Look at these That's all. When you look down from that horn, you can see that horn takes up the space from where? If we look at the photograph, 
-hmm. from in front of the eye all the way across the behind the ear. That's where that horn is. Yeah, I got to bring that horn up. I'm trying to. No, nah, you just got to put the line there. That's all. This is put new for me. There. This is this is a new new uh, a new trip for me. You know, you go on a journey. What trip of this is new for you? Um, making these adjustments without. Last time I did it, and I just erased it. So I'm trying not to erase it. Finally, I've been trying to get you not to do that and control the but pressure now, of the hand. Right. So now no. that I'm trying not to erase it, it's like, how do I, how do I go there? That's I, I guess I should put. Hold on. Nadine, that's the yeah. stuff. I know. Yeah, I hear you. Because that's when you can talk about all of that and your touch. That's a that's a matter of your touch. See, in the beginning of all your work, you don't want your your lines to be heavy. You want I'm your touch to, like, to be light. I know um, that's what you gotta practice I'm when you separate piece of paper. You gotta practice that on a separate piece of paper to get your touch together. It's mm -hmm. all from the elbow and the wrist when you're working the way that you're working now. And you're mm -hmm. holding it in a traditional sense, the pencil. I, you I, should really I, try to hold it. You should really try to hold a pencil. Look like this, Nadine. I hear you. Because <laughs> when you hard. hold it like this, like you're holding, look, this is what's causing you to stress. You're trying to use it like you're writing on a flat surface up against the wall. Look at what. Look at how much stress you're putting in your hand. Look. I know. No, this is so hard. That's why you go no, this is why you should go like this. I'm telling you right now, Don, this is, like this. this is maybe I can do. It's really hard. Well, you got to you got to force your hands just like exercise or it's just like boxing at that point. You got to put your hand in that position, put your body in that position and then you got to make it so. It's just like when you're playing the violin. There's no other way around it. You got to get the shoulder up. Yeah. So with us as artists, you got to have many different ways of holding apparatuses in your hand to get the mark that you're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. You see, those are the things that, you know, trying to talk with our live group like this, it gets a little bit too intricate. And then the next thing you know, we got to have another session on this. <laughs> you yeah. see? And then it sounds like Don is talking too much, but he's really not because mm -hmm. he's trying to talk you through the situation because we're not in a room together. So that's what happens. If we're not in a room together, got to over talk it so you can pound yourself to try to force yourself to get your hand to move. You're doing it. Yeah. You got it's it, hard. Nadine. I think I have to do it like this. Yeah. It, I, it breaks. It, you're breaking yourself to make yourself. Because everybody wants to hold the pencil like this. Everybody oh, feels like comfortable that. in the writing position. Which one you like? Oh, this is a new one. Which one you like? You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Break yourself to make yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's all over the place. Think about it. When you go to the military, what do they do? They break you. Break you to make you. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you got to break yourself out of certain things that you think you know to make yourself see things that are going to be successful for you. And success doesn't have anything to do with right nor wrong either. You see, it's just success. You accomplish the task. You got the idea. Now you're applying it. You're making it part of your lexicon, bang. But see, while you're making those marks, you're not really looking. I can tell, let me tell you why. Because wow. you didn't look up to see where his mouth was to see how it's aligned with the side of the mouth. You see, you didn't look because if you look, you can see the side of the mouth is below where the nostrils are. Look across from the edge where you're putting it in his mouth. 
No, the back end of the mouth. This part. Nadine. Nadine. Nadine, the back end of the mouth. This part right here. Yeah. You're at, right? Mm -hmm. If you look at the photograph, the nostrils is above that point. Okay. You see what I'm saying? This is the type of observation that I'm trying to get you to lock into. Yeah. With the with the with the personal one-on-one -on -one classes online, that's what we're trying to fine-tune your eye to see. Edges. Because you're just dropping them in. You're not looking at the alignment while you're dropping them in. What I mean is, is that if I know, look, Nadine, if I know that nostril is below the mouth, I'm not going to keep on putting this line in going up here. Gotcha. I have to stop that movement because it, or, I already saw in the photograph that the nostrils are below that back edge of the mouth. Okay. So I, I, no matter how many times I, I keep on hitting that line like this, like how you're doing, it's just going to stay permanently that oblong. It's going to look like the mouth is way up here rather okay. than being in the, in the position below the nose. That's mm -hmm. what we're meaning about compare and contrast. You're looking at the edge of the bottom of the nose. You're looking right where you have the mouth. And you're saying, oh, I got the back edge of the mouth too high. So I don't have to erase it. All I have to do is just put a mark to say where the nose is. And now I'm smudging away that back edge of the mouth to go round with the snout, to go with the muscle that's pulling that top jaw up. That's how deep the observation gets. It's not a ruler type of idea. That's what everybody thinks. You can take the ruler measurement and you can go. No, it's observation. Looking at those edges, wherever you put an edge, you started putting that line in for the mouth right here. The minute you put it in, you got to look at the photograph and say, okay, where is it at in comparison left to right with areas around me? Oh, the nose is right there. Oh, the nose is above that point. Oh, okay, now, now I know when I'm making this mark, I can't take it higher than that point because the nostrils horizontally are higher than that point. So you're not looking across in that matter. You mm -hmm. have to look across from each edge, every edge that you make, and you have to go back and look at the photograph and match it or compare and contrast it. Because then if you look at the, uh, the, the, the horn, look all the way across the horn. When you look all the way across to the horn, what's in alignment with the horn horizontally? The nostrils. The nostrils. You see that? Yes. You see how you have yours higher? Yeah. See how you have to just bring that line down now? That's it. You just draw a line down. You see how close you have the horn to the eye? But in all actuality, the horn is behind the eye, down, horizontally. My oh. eye needs to be over. No, what, see, look at the alignment. That's all. And then just adjust in large or condensing area. That's all you, you're doing. Because when you look horizontally from, from an edge, you look horizontally from the edge of the eye, you can see the tip of the horn is right there. You see, when you look vertically up and down from where the, the tip of the horn is in a photograph, mm -hmm. then you look at your piece and you say, okay, I, I got to move it back a little bit, and then boom. Or I move the eye forward a little bit. You see? But it has to be vertical. You know what I mean? You're looking at that vertical alignment to mm -hmm. say where it is. Then you're checking horizontally from that point. So technically, all you're doing is you're looking in the photograph to see what's aligned here. As soon as you see that, you see the horn is right there. Now you have to check where the horn is. If you look horizontally across from the horn, it's in alignment with the middle of the nostril. That's how you know where that horn is sitting. Mm -hmm. And it's training yourself to see these type of spaces. It's training yourself to look at these edges like this because you do it naturally. If he was in the park or a petting zoo and I said, Nadine, go grab that, that, that ram by the horn. You're going to do what? You're going to look at the edges. You're going to look at the shape. You're going to look at the shape of his eye to make sure he ain't looking evil or something. You know? 
You know what I'm saying? You're going to look at the edge of his body to see if his muscles is looking like he even wants you to be next to him, right? Mm -hmm. And then you're going to reach out to do what? To look to grab the roundness of the horn. Mm -hmm. So all I'm saying is all those things hold true in order for you to be tactile as a human being, then all those things that we just talked about is in your abilities to be able to express yourself. You know, that's why when you go into school, they have 13 principles of design. Mm -hmm. They're all based upon, when you look at it, they're all based upon your movements as a human being. Mm -hmm. So I deduced it down to five. Line, shape, form, light, and surface. Because those are the main five that control all those other uh, uh, columns and rows. So when you talk about perspective you're really talking about form so then your edges your idea of edges change your idea of edges you start looking at how surface is the edge now mm -hmm. and you look at the role and the movement of how fur is moving how the muscles is moving and stuff like that you see all that's in there look if you look at the back of the horn you see there's a certain area where the back of the neck is hitting the bottom of that horn if you look across from the bottom of the horn, you'll see what? That the bottom of the horn is in alignment with the bottom of the mouth. Mm -hmm. See what you have to do to your horn? Yeah. This is what I mean by edge management now, everybody. Edge management. Because you're looking, you're looking across horizontally, you're looking up and down vertically from every edge to be able to get a placement. Soon you get faster at it because you, you know it's trial and error. Mm -hmm. That's why there is no right and wrong. There's only trial and error. There's only your intent. You intend to get that horn to match the movement of what you're looking at. There you go. That's all you got to do. And now when you look in the inside curve, right? What is the inside curve uh, uh, aligned with? Bottom the, bottom, of the, the bottom yeah. of the nose nostril. Yeah. You see? Yeah. And then the upper part of that horn is going higher to go to where? Aligning with the top edge of the nose. And then now you got it. The mm. horn is, the tip. Yep. Right there. Yep. Right there. And now that inside loop comes down now. You can see it. You see? Yeah. It comes down. Yeah, and then over. And the same thing on the upside of that. It comes down and then up and over. Now look at it. See how that hole got bigger now? Yeah. You see, then you stop and you look at, okay, how wide is it going? Well, at what point is it starting to curve? It's starting to curve again when it hits the level of where the ear is, right here. So you came this way, right, Nadine? And you started coming up. I'm saying when you start to look to say where this curve is, you're looking to see where horizontally in the picture, where does it start to curve? It starts to curve, if you notice, with the alignment horizontally of where the ear is, that's where that curve starts. Mm -hmm. And then the only other place it has to go is where? Curve it to the ear, the tip of the ear, right below the tip of the ear. Yeah. Yeah. Then you can see how it comes down now, you see? Mm -hmm. And then over to make that hole bigger and to make the, uh, the tip of the horn a little bit thinner. There you go, you see? Mm -hmm. I know it's frustrating because it's not how you would typically look at it for yourself. That's what you're fighting, that's what you're breaking, or you can say you're adding to your observation skills. That's what I try to say to people. So it's not so much break. But you know, you have some hard people out there. So you got to use the word break sometime because that's what they understand. Yeah, that's what we understand. We we understand breaking things. Oh, all right, I got to break my habit. Yeah, you got to break the habit. Yo, oh, I got to break this idea. Yeah, you got to break the idea to be able to put something else in there. Or you can say, if you're one of these type of people, oh, I'm just adding on to what I know. Yeah, that's it. 
Do your, yep, I was about to say, Nadine, move your hand in the same direction. Don't do that hesitation thing. Move your hand in the same direction. No, like this, Nadine, look. When you're smudging, you put the stroke in like this, right? Yeah. So you, this, I'm getting rid of this line. Smudging. No, you're still smudging that direction and didn't go in the correct way that you're saying you need to go. Oh, okay. All the smudging, all your movements have to go in the same direction because now when you really come in and darken in that back edge line where you want it to be, uh -huh. it's going to look more like the roundness of the horn. See, that's okay. another thing you got to put yourself. See, when we're smudging things, we have a, a thing where human beings, we want to do this. Look, Nadine, you want to do this. Instead of going with the mo you put the motion in like this, you put the mark in like that, right? Mm -hmm. So now you want to do all your motions that way. You want to smudge that way. You want to erase that way. Because once you do it, I'm telling you, it's going to make it look even realer than what it is. You're trying to fool the eye. There's no other way around it. This has to be what? Your labor of love. Yeah. Because it's, it takes a lot. I agree. But stay over. Oh, look at your face too much, Nadine. <laughs> you gave me the look. No, you're going. Y'all are having this journey with me. Come on in. Come Thank on you. in. Yeah. You know, oh, we don't have Miss Paulette this morning. She wasn't able to make it. Yeah, she had to work today. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Hey, Miss Paulette, when you get to look at it, don't work too hard. And I have to say this because we're in Philadelphia. Fly, Eagles, fly. Yeah, fly, <laughs> Eagles, fly. That's right, everybody. We in Philly. Eagles, E-A-G-L-E-S, Eagles. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so now you chiefs better watch out that's in town y'all better watch out and another mm -hmm. thing is y'all y'all chiefs y'all better watch out for all the <laughs> protests about down there to, to argue your indian name and everything so you know y'all got a lot to worry about you know you better be focused when you come in the game everybody okay mm -hmm. that's all about the game i'll leave it at that because we can be talking for hours on that <laughs> show enough show enough you know, it turned into an art sports uh, blog. You know what I mean? Well. <laughs> That's um, an idea, though. That's an idea. Yeah. Doing artwork over sports and talking sports and yep. maybe doing sports figures. Yeah. Duh. <laughs> write that one down, Nadine. Come uh, on, write that one down, man. Oh. Hello to everyone on Twitch. You hear that? That might be coming to channel near you. Yeah, buddy. Y'all best believe it, man. So come on, everybody in Twitch. Leave us some comments out there. I know I haven't touched the canvas yet, but Nadine opened up a bag of worms, and we just been going with the worms. And now you can see how Nadine gets to understand how to make her movements for her particular things. Yeah, you can see frustration. We want you to see all of that because that's the journey. That is the journey. And I am the guinea pig. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, we, we don't have one of our other guinea pigs here to be happy with us. You know what I mean? <laughs> so this pain is your pain without you having the pain, folks. And I'm so yeah. glad that you're joining us on this. And we have some new members, too. And I hope they figure out it's, it's a gathering, a community. We come together. We're not trying to, you know harass you all the time. This is really, come on in on Sundays. Let's do some art. And if you really want to work on um, fine tuning, what do you call it? Uh, edge management. Yep. Then reach out to Don. Yes, I am plugging him now because you just got a little taste of something that usually cost you something you know he Dude. is a coach he's an amazing coach and teacher and he guides you you know and for those that really want to improve their edge management which he was that's a new term for me today y'all is okay. it's a struggle I'm telling you right now but if you want to grow you gotta you know that's what you gotta do 
And you, you know, I, repetition I, yes, and I feel like my calling, my reason, part of it for being here is to help bring people together and inspire them to push them to continue to grow no matter how old they are. Sometimes we think, you know, after 50, why do I got to still be studying? Why do I still need a coach? You know, but you're, yeah. you're never too old for a coach. You know, there's business never. coaches, your art coaches, um, you know, fitness coaches, you know, so all of these things. <laughs> yep, absolutely. And, you know, the, and, the, and things are normally free, but we believe that, you know, some of it is just getting, getting, getting you excited about what you can create. And I've been, I'm on my soapbox and I still haven't figured out how to deal with the eye of this thing. It's so okay. Look at the edges again. Look at the photo and then look, when you look at the photo, right? Look, I'm gonna point my camera towards the photo now. Let me move my other chair out the way that I had here. Uh, Just for you. Right here in front of my, can you see that? Yeah, you got a little Better. bit of a, yeah, there you go. There we go. That's perfect. Bang. Now we see it, right? Yeah. So then now look, everybody, I'm looking at the photograph. So then now when I blow certain things up, you're looking from the edges. So now we have it in regular format, right, Nadine? Hold on. Let me move my other chair out the way. And we can get a little bit closer in there. There we go. That's a little bit better. Right? So then we can give you some instruction on how, how I'm doing that, how I'm looking. See, I got the laptop, if you notice, set up diagonally or straight across from where I'm sitting. So I'm looking at this like how I would look at it if I was outside. So that's another little trick that I do with photographs, everybody. I look at a photograph as if I put myself right there with the animal or whatever I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. I'm in that space. I'm there. I don't know what mountain range he's at. I don't know. I'm saying he's over here in Erie, Pennsylvania, where I can go. Mm -hmm. I've seen those mountains before. I, so I'm saying I'm right there, and I'm looking at this goat from a fair distance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do I have a telephoto uh, lens? No, I do not. But my mind is one. Mm. Uh, we're going to take it there today, Nadine. We're going to take it there. Do I have a telephoto lens? No, but my mind is one. Meaning that your mind is so powerful, everybody. You can imagine yourself anywhere. So I always imagine myself, if I'm using any type of photograph or periodical, I always imagine myself right there in that environment, right there with those people. Even if I'm doing an actor or a famous person, I'm sitting right in front of this person. Mm -hmm. I don't care if they have bodyguards and everything at that point. Why? Because I'm looking at the photograph and I'm imagining myself sitting there talking, talking to Oprah. There you go. To be able to talk to Oprah. When I do the Martin Luther King one that everybody saw me do, I'm imagining, yeah, Martin Luther King's been gone for quite some time now. But when I'm looking at the photograph, I'm right there with him at that time point, looking at him in that room. That's something, Don. Yeah. If you, if you apply it, you'll have even more fun. That's why I'm always happy and stuff. Mm -hmm. because I'm not looking just to say, oh, I'm just trying to do the ram. And I, I got, no, I'm having a whole experience. I'm mm -hmm. in this picture with the ram in Philadelphia, in my studio. Uh -huh. I'm in that picture with the ram. Uh -huh. I'm looking at that ram's eye and I'm saying, okay, what's the line with it? So she's going to stand perfectly still with me. What's the line? Oh, I see where the edge of the eye is. If I look straight down, the horn is behind that axis. So mm -hmm. I know that the, the horn can't come over here, not unless I'm making it up. If I'm making it up, fine. If I'm making it a caricature, fine. If I'm trying to get closer to what the ram is, no. You see? And that's only intent now. I didn't say nothing in there about wrong or right. Oh, you put the horn over here, you're wrong. Oh, you put the, wrong, the horn up here, you're wrong. No, you could be doing a caricature. You can be doing a cartoon. Your feelings are what this ram is. Okay, if you're doing that, then understand you're working subjectively, then measurements don't really mean anything to you. 
-hmm. You see? But if you're trying to be objective and you're trying to be in the environment with this ram, like how I'm thinking in my mind, to keep this guy from running down on me with these big horns and knock me over, yeah, I'm looking at those edges like that. I'm looking at horizontal and vertical alignments. Sure, I'm not, it's not right here. Okay, then if I'm right next to the eye here, I'm looking across to the ear. I already know there's space there. I can't put that ear right next to the eye. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to put space there. And then that's where some people get frustrated and they'll stop. Rather than just putting some space there behind the ear. Mm -hmm. Do we know exactly how much? Well, use the eye. If you use the eye as a measurement, right? You'll see that another eye fits right in between where the back, where the front of the ear is connected to the skull and the back of the eye. Just take a visual measurement of it. You know, put your thumb there, take a visual measurement, and you'll see that that width of the eye is the same width in between the ear and the back of the eye. You get another eye there. So if that's true, whatever size you made your eye, your eye now, you use your eye that you made. Mm -hmm. You just saw the, 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 the information. You see, you just saw it, right? You don't mm -hmm. take that measurement and then go to your page. No, you take what you saw, that surveying of that area. And now you look at yours and say, oh, I got to put more space behind my ear. And then now you just put a line to put space guesstimated at first. If you don't want to guesstimate, then use the eye as a measurement. As soon as you do it, you got to put that space in there. Mm -hmm. you see and it's based upon whatever edge you made so you made the eye a certain size then that means when you look at the goat and you see that that space is behind the eye you got to use the, the eye that you measure your measurement on the page take mm -hmm. that shape of the eye and then use that as a measurement to go behind the ear mm -hmm. and that's your measurement your eye that you drew that's the measurement, okay? And then now when you start doing that, it starts working faster and faster for you over here mm -hmm. when you're dropping things in, honestly. And that's when people say to me, oh, man, Don, you made me really believe in it. Think it's because I'm believing it too. Mm -hmm. See, that's what a lot of people miss out on. Why do artists play music and stuff inside their, their spaces? Mm -hmm to make an experience, an environment. So then now you're actually living the experience so now your body can follow that idea. You see, I can go into the therapies and stuff for our elder guys, for all our beautiful people, as I call it, all our retirees, to show you that it never stops for you. As Soon as your eyes open, it's on. You, you can't get away from this. And then now once you start looking at it more and more, you guys, I've had people that I'm, I've been teaching for the last past eight years. We've become friends. Ray Della, who used to come on here a lot. She, <clears throat> our first encounter, and I used to crack jokes with her. You know, she wanted to see a cloud. And, you know, and we started, you know, debating and, and going at each other. But look, eight years later, she's able to draw whatever she wants to draw now. She doesn't mm -hmm. have any hangups about what she's going to draw. Well, she may have a couple of hangups about the, the subject matter now. You know what <laughs> I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's moved on from draft womanship and draftship to, you know, uh, a, a really a thing about subject matter now for her. Mm -hmm. You know, what to draw? What do I want to say now? That's a better place to be in than to worry about your drawing skills, everybody. So in other words, if we was in a room together, yeah, I'm hands on. I'm sitting there right there with you. Mm -hmm. And then I may ask you, I'll look at you and ask you, hey, do you want me to show you on your drawing or do you want me to show you on a separate piece of paper? Right. And a lot of times everybody goes for both. I know that's going to happen. So I just, you know, I, I feed them a line and put some good bait on it. And then they go, yeah, uh, show me on a separate piece of paper. You know what I mean? If you really like that. I don't want you to touch my drawing. It's my drawing. Show me on a separate piece of paper. All right. Then I do that for those people. Then you have other people that'll be like, um, yeah, can um, yeah, can you show me? Uh, yeah, can you show me? I don't mind. Please show me. And yeah, that's the person that's saying, I really don't want you to touch it, but I don't know what I'm doing. So please show me. 
And then you can see it when I do one or two lines with people, they'll see my hand movement. They'll see how I put the line down. And we're like that. When they say that hundred monkey thing, that line that everybody hears, it's really true. If I do a movement on the board or on this drawing in front of you with my hand and just zoom in on my hand, like I, you see some of our competitors doing, you're going to have a, a, a more of a tendency to want to do what my hand did. You're going to follow by interpretation. You're going to follow by what? Observation, looking. It's the same thing for everything, everybody. You're looking at the edges of my hand to see how I'm holding the pencil, to see how my wrist moves. And then you're going to do it. You're going to try to get your wrist. And I've seen people doing that where you'll see the back of their head doing this, Nadine. They'll be on camp. They'll be drawing it. And then the hand is moving and the head is moving like this. Because <laughs> they're trying to make the muscle memory movement, you see? Yeah. A lot of people don't think that stuff is in there, Nadine. Muscle memory, therapy, it's all in there. Yeah, I don't talk about it because it, it's... It's not for every modality when you're trying to show somebody how to draw or how to observe this beautiful world that we're in. Because that's what it's really all about, especially for the elder, Nadine. It's more about the re-evaluation of the environment. You're, you're looking at it in a new, because you're not pass it because you have to get up and go and all this other stuff splash my face get somebody together to go here and then i gotta go here for nine hours now i gotta hurry up back i'm cursing out people on the highway i've got you know you're not concerned with all this stuff now you're mm -hmm. driving the car looking oh, the sun is really beautiful today you know what i'm being honest yeah, yeah. driving a car with a retired person and and you'll notice how you're really supposed to look at the world. They have nobody else to worry about now. Mm -hmm. And then you I'm on the bus. Elder gentleman was sitting next to me. He said, I never realized how beautiful the, the sun looks on these bricks out here. Now, look, he wouldn't have looked no other time if he was working. Right. He said it. We all, he said, if I was working, I wouldn't have looked at that young man. I didn't quote him on it. I didn't say, hey, sir. He was already looking out the window. And then he mm -hmm. quoted to me. I was looking out the window. He says, I see why you smile all the time when you're looking out the window. I don't know this man, but he notices me looking out the window, not caring about nobody, just looking out here, just loving it, smiling. Everything. Mm -hmm. I'm really that way, everybody. And I suggest everybody be that way. Really investigate your environment. Love mm -hmm. the way that sun comes in and gives you that brightness that you're seeing that you want to interpret. Mm -hmm. You know, use that now when you're looking at a photograph like we're looking at this ram. Right. Look how beautiful this ram is. Look at how majestic this ram is. Appreciate it. Wow, look at the edges. Even go to the point if some of you can't imagine that you're touching this animal to feel the, the pulse of the blood through the veins. And if you can imagine to that level, take it there. Have it. That's the experience. Now bring all of that to the drawing. Oh my God. Bring all that to the oil painting. After you done drew it, imagine if you did it in an oil painting. And now you're you're having those those moments in the oil painting. Oh sickening. Sickening this drawing would be from your very own hand. Right. That's what we're moving towards, Nadine. Yeah. That type of confidence. I know everybody, we talked mainly during this one, but it was all important. Thank you, Nadine, for putting yourself on the spot so people can really understand the intricacy of what we're trying to do. We're not trying to force it on you, but we're just saying, if you want it like that, we got it here for you. Where We're going to sit there, hook and jab with you, get your hand to move where you want to. Sure, you may get frustrated. You may even curse. It's okay. We're adults. You may throw an F-bomb or two. It's okay, as long as it's not rampant. You know what I mean? Because frustration is real. You know what I mean? Frustration is real. I, tell, I even tell kids in the room, listen, we're not in school. So if an F-bomb or sugar honey iced tea comes out of your mouth, Mr. Don is not going to hold you like, oh, my God, how could you do that? Such a child. No. I'm going to say we're in the art room. We're safe. Long as it's not in every other word, I'm okay. When it becomes a matter where you're trying to use it every other word, like we on the street, like sailors or something. No, nah, my friend, you need to change up your English 
I need to talk to your parent. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> but if it slips out because you're having an, an expressive moment, then yeah, that's all within it. Because mm -hmm. that's the fight. That's the real journey. You know, I can't have that journey for you. All I can do is stand on the side. You know, I know you don't want me to stand in front of you so you can smell me on a downdraft. No. So uh -huh. You want me on your side. And not really behind you, you know what I mean? Because you don't want nobody just standing behind you for no reason. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so I'm standing side you want me to stand on, and I'm just pointing and saying, try this. Try right. that. Did you look at this? Did you look at that? So then this way, you add that observation to your observations already. You're already looking. You got it there. Oh, I didn't look that intricate down. I didn't look from the back of the eye to look straight down to see what's aligned with it. I never thought to look like that. Oh, I never thought to look from the uh, tear duct of the of the uh, animal to see what aligns all the way across that it aligns with the opening in the ear. Man, I didn't look like that, Don. I really didn't look. But but if you start looking that way, and I'm just pointing and saying shoot. And now it starts going in, we start counting up three pointers. You know what I mean? Right. Or if I put the ball there and I'm the holder, since we got Super Bowl, we got the Super Bowl going down with the Eagles, right? And I'm right. the holder. Come on, man. I got it in the right angle. Put this through those right up the, the, those uprights, man. We're gonna put it right down the middle. We got right. you. You know what I mean? I got you. I got my finger right on the point where it needs to be for you. Just kick it. I don't care if you kick my finger off, kick it off, break it. I reset it later. You know what I mean? We're making millions out here. <laughs> you see, so I'm doing the same thing for you. I'm holding the ram in place with my finger. And I'm saying, yeah, draw it. He's about to kick me. I don't care. He's about to kick me. I need you to, to draw this point right here. And then you see me get kicked. Bang! You know what I mean? <laughs> You know, but that's the type of fun that we're trying to have, everybody. See, we're not even really worrying about the finish line. It's more so about the experience, everybody. If you're able to let yourself free to have the experience, just to let it out. Now, here's another one that bothers people when I say it. Let it out like a fart, like a belch. You know what I mean? When you do that, I'm telling you, when you do those actions, you can't hold them. You try to, you just can't. It's a known fact, human to human, everybody. I've been, I'm not saying anything wrong. I say this because personally, all of you know, when you have these moments, you know. You go, oh, man, I, I, I better not go around people. Uh, I better stay home. Oh, I can't stay home. I got to go to work. What antithesis can I take? What can I, you know what I'm saying? You're thinking all this stuff. I'm saying let that action be your art now. Not literally, metaphorically speaking. Let your art just fall out of you. Laugh at it if it comes out. Some of the ladies that I teach in South Philly, oh man, they love it now because they know now. So when they make a certain drawing of a face, because we do a lot of figure drawing out there, and the face looks all oblong and looks out of proportion. Yeah, they laugh. They say, boy, Don, I'm murdering this young lady. You know what I mean? I hope we don't never meet this young lady. I said, yeah, I never met her either. So don't worry, you won't hurt her feelings. <laughs> you know, yeah. we did a drawing of Beyonce. Some of the young ladies in the room said, boy, I made her forehead real big. Ah, don't worry. A lot of people say her forehead is big. So let's just correct it. <laughs> you see, you got to have fun. It's the journey. It's not just the finish line. Everybody else wants the finish line. Your viewing audience, whoever that's going to be, your husband, your wife, your friends, your kids, your neighbors, uh, people in your office spaces, whoever you're going to decide to let in on this whole journey, that's the viewing audience to worry about the end. You're worrying about the journey from beginning to end. All those spaces in between, that becomes your toolbox. You see, and then now you can be free like all of us over here. Nadine knows that she's done freed up a lot. Some of these conceptions that she has, she can explain and expound upon it. Because before she would be really killing herself over trying to be perfect with this drawing. Now you heard her, she no woman in hind, no extra air. 
Y'all can check the videos in the beginning. If you check the videos in the beginning, and you it's see everybody in that camera. It's sad. Oh, 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 all right. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. Oof, oof, oof. Now, look at so all smiles. Oh, all right, that didn't work out there. Okay, I'll go back at it again. Whole persona is added on. You see, you guys, you can do that too. It's about the journey. I'm telling you, have the journey. Laugh. Let it out. You know what they say: your face uh, uses less muscles to laugh than it is to frown. Come mm. on, daddy. Come on. This is how art becomes a therapy for you personally. You don't gotta go to an art therapist. You can have your therapy. You can sit here, laugh at your drawing with us. Sure, your Rams hit. When the last time you did a Ram drawing, everybody? Just ask yourself that. You know what I mean? First time. Right. So then how could you be so scrutinized so hard on yourself? Oh, this is not right. That's not right. Everything is not right. That edge is not right. That, 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 uh, have a fart. Have a creative fart. Get a creative climate on it. You know, and a lot of other artists, they like that term. I think I'm going to put that on a t-shirt too. Creative yeah. colonic. Yeah. Well, I don't know about creative colonic. Yeah. yeah. Because you're having a journey to unplug yourself, to let things go. You know what I mean? Just let it go. And when you get in a colonic, I don't care what nobody says. I have one of those. You can't hold on to nothing. It's going to come but a whole but uh, yeah, everything, everything when they do the colonic. So you are not holding on to nothing. And you, 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 then you would understand why Don says what he says. Oh, yeah, that's why his art is so open. He had an experience that told him about openness. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yes. I'm not going to lie. Yes, everybody. But right. look at what, I, what I'm able to do with confidence. And then look what I'm able to do to come out and say, I'm going to coach whomever. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So you got to look at that confidence and you can acquire that too. It's just from repetition and doing. Line, shape, and form, light, and surface. And the do, 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 and the hashtag keep creating. You know what I mean? That's what we do here. So let's give you a little bit of tidbits of where we was going to go. Totally with distance. We talked out all that. We was both on it. We shared a soapbox today, Nadine. We were yes, both we, on it. Yes, we did. So today was going to be mainly about just putting in some of you, establishing your darks now, establishing where the lights and darks are. So if you, everybody has the photograph, you would put it in black and white mode, like we suggested, you know, so long ago in the other videos, but we are reiterated. When you get a photo from us, what you want to do is keep it in color. So if you ever wanted to paint it or something one day, you can paint it. And then what you want to do is make a copy of it in black and white. Mm -hmm. what that does body is it'll help you to see where the shadows and the lights are without worrying about color see when you're looking at something you have to turn off the urge to want to see the color and just see the tonality so it's best that you take a photograph and since we're in this information digital age it's easier to do you just make a copy of the photograph then you copy it again and you take that copy or duplicate and then go in and then go into your selections and then you press black and white or Vista or whatever black and white mode you have. You press that to make everything black and white. Now you can see where these darks and lights are. And then mm -hmm. after a while, you'll start being able to see these things naturally now. You'll be able to turn off the urge and want to see the color to say brown rather than saying how dark and light that area is. OK, so if now if we really look, we're establishing certain darks in here now. So I'm going to change up my viewing on how I do things just a little bit so you can see the hand moving and doing it there. OK, everybody Let's see here. Let me see where my hand is. OK, cool. So now look, everybody, if you look in certain areas on a photograph, you have certain darks that are established in this area here. And if you notice, if you look at the photograph, it goes down and away in this area. And it winds up getting right beside where the nostrils, not at where the nostrils are, but where that muscle is for the snout to bend back and forth to pull the jowl back. 
Hey, John, can yeah, you pull but, back just a little bit? I'm missing the nostril. Yeah, just a oh, little bit. Okay. You see it now? Can you see uh, this area now? Yes. Better? Much better. Okay, cool. Lights good? Yes, fabulous. Okay, all right. You see now, everybody? I would put a little bit of that darkness in there to establish it, you see? Then now I'm coming back. And this is what I was making mention to you, Nadine. You see how I put the stroke in on that yeah. diagonal area to yeah. mimic that movement that I'm seeing in the photograph of the fur going that way? Mm -hmm. To start it, now I put that mark in there. I can't obliterate that movement. Once you do this, you obliterate the movement. It puffs mm -hmm. up. I'm gonna go with that movement, you see? In every movement you do, you want to go with those movements. And the more and more you go with those movements, you see what happened when I did it? Look at how it feels like that's almost like how that muscle is moving there. In between the eye all the way down to here. So when I look at the photograph again, we look at it and we put some of these movements here. So now I can smudge a little here and here in the same direction. You see, I'm not going counter to the direction. I'm going in the same direction that I put the mark in to mm -hmm. overemphasize that movement. The minute that you do it, notice what happens. It starts to fool the eye. Your eye wants to believe that that real muscle is there because in your mind, that mark is like a sigil, they call it. It's an identifier. I put that mark there. I put these marks here. Your eye wants to say, oh, that is an animal snout. The more edges that we put together in that idea, the more your eye and your brain, my viewing audience, wants to even say even more animal. Then it wants to say ram. Oh, no, go. Oh, ram. And then now that's what you're floating in between. But really, it's all about establishing the darks and lights. You see, move in the directions that you put the marks in. It overemphasizes that even more. And on a two-dimensional plane, flat piece of paper, you want to overemphasize more and more. You see? And then this way, you have to understand there is no perfection. The perfection is in the, in the photograph. Not the photograph itself. The object in the photograph is the perfection. Mm -hmm. you, you get where I'm going? Yeah. It, it's, every, everybody understands this on the world, but it's a, hidden, it's a hidden book that people don't talk about, but we do talk about socially. This is one of the things in it. As an artist, I have to understand, even if I'm doing three-dimensional sculpting, it'll never come to animated life. Sure, I can use the computer to make it feel like it's doing that and you're looking at a light show, yes. Mm -hmm. But in all actuality, I will never be perfect to the point where I can make a living goat. Right. So since I know that and I know I can't be perfect, I have fun on a journey. <laughs> you know, everybody, that's what it's about. So, and you can learn that from any religion. It's all in every book, known to man. It's all in there because that's what it's alluding toward. You can't be perfect. Can you make a, a living tree just from your hand? Like, how are we doing? We're drawing it. We can draw a tree. I can paint a tree. I can make you believe that it's almost real, but it's not absolutely real. Right. So, if you digest that one, everybody without getting offended or anything, because, you know, disclaimer, we're not out to offend you or challenge anybody's religion or things like this or, or concepts. What we're challenging is your ability to want to express, your ability to want to create, create, create. Create, you know, it's all about creating. That's it, that's it. You know, so you can do the scream that I used to do when I used to run around the house when I first saw uh, Frankenstein movie. He's alive! It's alive! Uh -huh. I used to run around my room doing that when I would have a success on a drawing. And my mom sometimes would come in and say, you got it? It's alive! It's alive! That's funny. 
So you guys, you can have this type of fun, man. Don't cut yourself, you know. Well, what's the other one? You cut off your nose to smite your face or wherever that goes. Right. Yeah, you that one. Come on, because you know, this idea of everybody wanting to be so perfect is, is a killer. Like, look, I'm not worried about the fur. I'm worried about the direction of the darkness underneath the eye. Mm-hmm. You see, and I put some of that in there. Now I come in with a tortillion now. You see, one of these puppies. Mm-hmm. And now I come in and I shade the same way, move the same way. So then now I can control where I put that darkness in. And now I really can get you to feel that triangular darkness that's underneath that eye right there. See, but notice how I'm moving everybody. I'm moving with that that idea of what I said that shape is for the eye. You see, to get to where that muscle is on the surface, you see? And the minute I did it, look at how almost real that eye becomes. Like, I want you to feel from my version, I want you to feel like he's really looking at you. Because mm-hmm. be honest, if this was on your front lawn, Nadine, and you walked out the house, would you be going to work today? I'd be screaming. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'd be, I'd be like. <laughs> <laughs> and you're calling the cops, you're calling whoever you can call. Like, Animal listen. control. Yeah, well, I don't think I don't even think animal control will come out. They'll tell you, oh, there's nothing we can do about that, man. Just let him walk off on his own. <laughs> I mean, look, and, and I Googled it to find out if something happened at the zoo. Something, you know what I mean? You're trying to figure out a reason why this, like, magnificent creature is staring at you in your front lawn, daring you to come out. Because if he is, something, something has drastically gone wrong. Yep, you don't see no friendliness on him. You don't see no tail wagging. You don't see his butt moving like a dog or nothing. <laughs> I'll be like, Richard, get in the house. <laughs> yep, get in here. He's not happy at all. He's not trying to be friendly. Get over here, man. You know what I mean? What are you doing? You're going to get us both killed, right? <laughs> right? He sure enough would get us both killed. Yeah, but see, this is the journey, everybody. Like how Bob Ross used to say, make up a story, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. You ever watch Bob Ross's channel? He always says that. Make up a story about the tree that you're doing. Because he knows once you start doing that, you're really channeling the best parts of yourself to put it in there. You see, I start saying how scary this animal could be in your front lawn if he was this close. I'm telling you, you're going to start putting in certain darks deeper because you're imagining, wow, if he was in front of me, whoa, you know what I mean? And that's the the overemphasizing that we need. You know, uh, the shows that I told you guys about, everybody were asking me about more so my drawings because they said, I really can feel the color in the drawings that you did. How did you do that? Right. I said, it's being mindful on how surface moves and mm-hmm. how light moves across the surface. That's why light and surface is interchangeable in our idea or suggestion. You go line, shape, form, light and surface, or you can go surface and light. Either which way, you can't do anything without surface and light, really to make things seem dimensional. So understanding these things too, like over the eye, I'm making that movement to fade it in more, you see? Blend it in more, really get into the blending idea, everybody. Because the more that you blend, I'm telling you, you come back in with that eraser and yeah, next week will be about our eraser how you take the eraser and really start showing us that movement of the fur to agitate the surface that way. But for right now, it's all about the darks and lights. You see, and now I'm gonna move down behind the ear. I'll be behind the eye now. And now you can see that there's a darkness here. It moves over just a little bit. You see, and then now see how I did that Nadine? I didn't just come in and erase it out. Mm-hmm. I used that stuff that was there and just forced it where I wanted to go. 
by smudging it and moving it on the surface, you see? Mm -hmm. All right. That's how you can work that, everybody. You know, and then as you're going along the way, you do the same thing. You look in these areas, you're smudging. Now, if you notice, if you smudge with the tortillion, things go a little darker. And then if you've been using your tortillion for a while, it should already have a buildup on it that you can use. Right. You see, and then you start placing it where some of the darknesses are, like right here. I would do a movement like this because this fur is not that even like a line like that. It's more so like that's fur that changes the going dark in this area, that darker brown, that darker value, you know? Here's another one. Do I know exactly the value of that fur from what I'm looking at? Because somebody sent me an email last week and says, well, the way you're talking, you're thinking that everything's a guesstimation. I said, well, show me how, when you're doing a drawing, can you get an exact value of tonality of a color that you're looking at. Mm. And the person got a little bit upset and things like that, but came back to their senses and really looked at the reality of it, where there is no right and wrong, there's only a reality. We can't. All I can say with positivity is it's a darkness that that dark brown is doing. What value of it, that's where we can all debate. Some of you would say, well, Don, you've been doing it the longest. You might be able to get closer to that. But no, I've had some kids that just started learning tonality and they're able to get pretty darn close to what they're seeing. So, you know, here's another area where there is no right and wrong, everybody. The only what is, I may say 50%, you may say 60%. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, we're seeing a darker tone there, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's the whole point. So we're looking across and now with my charcoal in my hand or my graphite in my hand, now I'm coming in and I'm adding in these darknesses the way that I'm seeing them now. I'm letting them move in that direction now. I'm not really pressing hard. Notice how I'm holding the apparatus, uh, Nadine, untraditional like a mug. Mm -hmm. You see, just to get that mark in. I'm not gonna stay in this mode and try to force my hand in there. I can't because my knuckles is too close. Okay, now to really dig in, I can put it in my fingers like this to get closer to the surface to get that mark to move the way I want it to move. You know, to touch lightly if I want to. You see, uh, to put the darkness in here, to start the darkness in the middle of the ear here. You see, and now you're using, see how I'm using the finger instead of all of the wrist and the elbow to move? That's a mm -hmm. workout, Nadine. You're going to work the whole yeah. shoulder. So what happens is I get my hand in a position and I'm really using my fingers. You see how I'm using the thumb? So I really mm -hmm. have the pencil in between my finger, my pinky finger there, you see? Mm -hmm. And then now I'm holding it like that. You see, everybody? Show you the whole view on how I'm holding the apparatus. Now I see why you got that camera, Nadine. It, it does that whole movement now if you wanted to, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so then now you can come in and now I can really move it now, you see? Really move it, control the pressure. <clears throat> see behind the ear, there's another darkness right here. I can adjust that darkness now. <clears throat> yep. <clears throat> and really get it going, everybody. You see, now I can start going for some of the effects, but not really because now I want to put a darkness in here that starts to go up to where the horns are. You see? Mm -hmm. You see what happens? Yes, we're going to put more darkness in there, but now we're just trying to establish where some of our darks are, where the lights are, things like that direction of the surface quality now the, the directional forces Ooh, that was a stutter and a half da, 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 da. <laughs> you gotta laugh at yourself sometimes everybody da, 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 da. the directional forces everybody if you really look at the how the surface is moving you want to mimic that you want to compare so are you going to be 
perfect or exact. No, we already established. We're not worrying about being perfect. We're more so being about, you know, approximation. I will say that, yeah. We can be approximate things like this, but to be right and wrong. No, no, no. Mm -mm. We're trying to get close to what that feels like. See now, so we know this darkness that's from here does this and then it hits the, the horn right here. Mm -hmm. Notice how I'm allowing that mark to go past just a little bit. So then now when I come back and establish that horn back over top, it's gonna feel like this is really in front of that. So optically speaking, that's why we wanna fool the human eye, everybody. We wanna fool you to believe that dimensionally things is coming in and out of the page that's not really moving. It's flat. So I remember in school, you know, in college, especially at Tyler, a lot of the professors was giving me, you know, accolades on that idea. It was something I had saw from way back when I was a kid that if I show this edge in front of this one, everybody's gonna say, yay. So that's what I was doing just to get the teacher to say, oh, Donald, yes, you get the certificate. You know, I come home and mom, oh, yeah, we got to put that on the refrigerator, that one. Yeah, you, you deserve a big hamburger for that one tonight. That, the, whoa, wow. Yeah. So I learned that earlier on from being a greedy kid, from being a kid that wanted to get accolades, wanted to get patted on the back. Once you find things, like I always say, you put it in your toolbox, it's been in my toolbox ever since. So every now and then you want to let certain strokes just go over lightly. And you see, I hope you can hear that. I'm barely touching, I'm not really pressing. I'm not, you see, I'm not doing that, everybody. If you can hear that, I'm not pressing that hard. I'm pressing like this. It's light, it's a light touch. Okay, Nadine? Yes. It's a light touch. Sometimes you need this, the heavy touch like that. Mm -hmm. But then a lot of times you need just that light touch. You're barely touching the surface with the point. And that accumulation helps to make you feel this idea of fur again. You see? Then we go up behind the ear a little bit more. We know that the ear is curving like this, right? So we put that darker edge in, but then when we look at the top of that round area where that lightness for the ear is, it comes out a little bit more. You see, and then down and over. Because how we can say that is because the fur from the back of the neck, or the, the how would you say, is bridle, you might as well say, like a horse. Yeah. You see? And now we bring that right out the back there. Look at how that starts to formulate, you see? Now I can come and bring my kneaded eraser if I wanted to. Now kneaded erasers and graphite have fun together. Now I can come in there with that graph, with this kneaded eraser and just rub it right out. You see, look at that. And now I have the light area for that ear already set up. You see, so now I'm not just erasing to correct myself, Nadine. I'm, er I'm erasing with a purpose now. Sure, I changed the mark of the ear from back here to here. I didn't really erase that area until what? I got this area together. Now I smudge this area in that same idea. Now I can come back and erase effectively, not just erase to say, oh, I want to get rid of that mark. No, I'm erasing to say, I want that to be a lighter tone in that area now. See the switch up? Mm -hmm. Sure, you see some of those light marks in there. Yeah, but that's going to get altered in the long run. So every time you come back, you're adjusting, you see? So then now I can come back to behind here and now I can give you some of this fur that's going this way. You see, and now I'm just showing where that darkness is coming from and how it's moving. And I'm looking at the photograph now because I showed everybody where the photograph is. And if you look, that nap of the hair, this darkness is going up to here above the point of where the eye is. You see on the ear here, just like so. And you see how I'm reestablishing where that mane may be in there. Yep. Because now instead of curving down, you can see where this is curving up. So now I come in there and I just put a couple of strokes in there because it's earlier enough in the game where it's not destroying anything. You see? 
-hmm. And then we keep working with that idea in mind. I'm looking in this area now, I'm coming down and I'm saying, okay, where's the darkness in that area? I look at the photograph. Oh, okay, mainly this darkness is up in here and it's turning this way. Then there's a light area, you see? Yeah. And then right about here is where that hair changes direction. So then in here, in this area, this part is doing this. Almost like a horse is, and then this one is coming this way. And then we pretty much got the idea there, you see? You know? Maybe I bring it back a little bit. Because remember, I'm adjusting because I, I don't want to take it all the way off the horn. If I have to, I got to take the horn off there and bring it back on here and then let it go off here. You see, they get that proper thickness. Act like that that paper is there and just make the movement. You see, and then come back in. I know I probably went out of camera scene, but I just wanted to make mention to that this week, everybody. So if you're working on your piece now, everybody, you, you know now, this week was all about working and looking for the darks and lights and the movements of those darks and lights. You know, like at first you want to just get the darks and light moving inside the horn. Then we'll worry about these horizontal or diagonal striation marks from the growth of the horn, you see? So obviously as it grows out, it's leaving a ring. You see that it's growing all the way out. So we'll deal with that over top of the idea. So now you can see that I have these motions going, just like in here, we had those motions going like that earlier, but then now we came back to what? To establish the movement of the horns over top. You see that edge that's moving. So that's what I mean by edges is everything. Edges are everything. You know, if he was engineers, we'd be talking about how, how edges encapsulate places, uh, outlines, areas, you know. If you look at a map, you know, and you look at a geoglyph, and that's what they are when they do those drawings on the ground with natural things or by you scratching the earth or removing dirt from certain areas, you have what you call a geoglyph where you can see from the heavens and you see down and you see these movements. But it's the same thing when you're looking at mountains and stuff, you're looking at the edges from top down and it's making certain movements that you would have to adhere to, to draw with, you know? So understanding how these things move, line, shape, form, light, surface. I live by them, I may even die by them. All I know is as a human being, these five things have become very important in my everyday experience. Whatever I put on my body, put in my body, or stand next around my body is based upon those five things. All right. So, yeah, everybody. Yep, it's 1155. I know we got started late, but you know what I mean? Sometimes you got to take a consolation prize. And sometimes we got to go off the hidden or off the, uh, the, the path and go to that hidden path that we went on today of uh, bloviating and talking aloud, everybody. No, just having fun. As long as you have fun, everybody, Nadine included all of us here at Let's Paint and Draw Along, really want you to have that journey. So yeah. crack a joke or two, have some fun. And if you're an Eagles fan, go Eagles! Yeah! Go Eagles. <laughs> Hope there's no, no Los Angeles Rams in the house. Oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> I know, corny joke. I'm done. I'm done. You brought the Rams in. <laughs> Too much. All right, everybody. Yeah, Nadine, you're looking good. Looking good over there. Thank you. You know it. It's a work in progress, y'all. Yep. Yep, it's a work in progress. There you go. You can see the darknesses are building up. Yeah. You see the reality coming in. Yeah, yeah, look at your ram. All right. Yeah, here we go. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There it is. Well, right, everybody, everybody, this was fun. So, you know, that's so what listen. it is this week. You're muted, Nadine. I can't hear you. Yeah, you're muted. No way. You're not? No. Hold on.
Is that me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hold on. I'll okay, do a test. Okay, I can't hear you though. Wow. Check one, two, three, check. All right. Let me try something. Yeah, I can't hear you, Nadine. Hold on. One second. One second. One second. We are going to go to... Um, speaker. Microphone. Um, One, two, three, check. One, two, three. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? All right, everybody. I don't know what's going on. Uh, I don't know what happened. Um, we're, we're checking a couple of things. We're down at the end. Okay. I've got audio on my end. So, um, uh, listen, we're hopefully we're going to get Don back. Um, one of the takeaways, I actually wrote it on the board until Don comes back. Um, one, you got to, sometimes you got to break yourself to make yourself. I thought that was a cool takeaway. That was one. I actually put that in the chat. I definitely think it's something to you know, think about it. You got to break old habits, you know, right from like holding a pencil when you're drawing. Y'all, this was hard. Um, I, I I can't do that yet. So I, I, I try. It's maybe if I'm doing this motion, but I, I think I found that I was more steady this way. And maybe it's because I it's a, it's a motion that I'm more comfortable using because I'm on a computer all the time. So I use a mouse. So I would say that's the case right now. I'm looking at it. I feel like this is muddy, you know, but I'm not going to say proportionally, but in retrospect to what I'm seeing with the photo is that um, I'm closer to what I'm seeing in the photo. So that was the other thing. Um, today, we talked about eight edge management. So all these things around the edges, proportion to like where the horn is in relation to the eye, um, horizontally and vertically to try to line things up not to be exact, but to kind of express what you're seeing with line. So, so this whole edge management, the space, the space, how far using an eye to measure the space, um, where things are, the nostril. I had to work on that, y'all. That was kind of hard. Um, and just trying to get that. I probably will have to draw this again. <laughs> but Don says repetition is where things happen. It's not about perfection. So I did want to say that. Um, um, and then, so he said something about he asked the question when, when you're out drawing things and maybe you're not close up on the subject is when you're doing it, is it because you have a telephoto lens? Like you have a telephoto lens and you're looking at what you're going to draw and then you go and do it? No. But your mind is one because your mind actually looks at something and then tells you what you're seeing. And so I think my interpretation of that all is, is that's where your mind comes into play. It becomes the telephoto lens. 
And I don't know. Uh, yes. Okay, I'm you back. back. How about that, Nadine? Yeah. Well, what happened? Okay. Well, what here's here's the thing. I was actually just recapping some points we spoke about. Okay. Um, sometimes you gotta break yourself to make yourself. That was there you go. And then I talked about um uh edge management, that this today we were really focusing on edge management and that I had to regroup and looking at where things are in terms of edges, the nostrils, the, the horn, uh, where that is to uh, in relation to other aspects of what I'm drawing and that it's a horizontal, vertical kind of comparison. You can use that line, visual yeah. line uh, to get that. Mm -hmm. And guys, uh, guys and gals, I'm going, I'm repeating this with John to make sure I'm not missing anything. And then the other thing is we talked about how when you're out or when you're drawing something, it's not like you have a telephoto lens or, or yeah, or some kind of, um, uh, what do you call it? Magnifying glass to right. see that, that you, the brain, your eyes and the brain are really amazing. It's an amazing machine. And it's able, and it becomes a telephoto lens. So that's what I received from you when you said, do I have a telephoto lens? No. But my, my mind is one. And so right. that was awesome. And then the, the, the biggest clincher out of everything that is absolute truth to why we are here, I believe, and I think Don would agree with me, and that is to inspire you to, uh, to be, have an observant mind and to know that you're always creating, and that yeah. it begins the moment you wake up. So I love yeah. that you said, soon as your eyes open, it's on. All right. So y'all, as soon as your eyes open in the morning, know that it's on. You are here to create. And that's, and that's why we get back to this whole thing about how important it is to keep creating, y'all. That's why we got let's see. Oh, no. see yeah. a team thing going on here. Team thing I'm telling going. you. It's 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 not it, it it's about drawing and painting, no doubt. It's about drawing and painting and having these moments of creativity. But this is just one uh, approach. Yes. To uh, to create, and yeah. we we're bringing you together in this aspect. There are many different ways of doing it, just from having conversations about life, using your mind, creating thoughts with your mind, creating words and poetry, all, all these different things, but we're just once the juices get flowing that's it it's unleashed, like it I said like, like Don said, as soon as your eyes open it's all it's that's right, I'm telling you Don, I want that on the t-shirt alright, as soon as your eyes open, it, it's on it's on everybody. Yeah. So yeah, we went a little over. We, you know, we we got a little bit of a slow start. Thank you for uh, hanging out with me as I was juggling things, and and Don was able to jump on when he was able to uh, jump on. Uh, what I want y'all to do is I want you to give a shout out. I want you to shout out in a group how amazing Don is with all his suggestions, he's dropping, he's dropping the knowledge, he's dropping the knowledge. And this knowledge is, is normally not free. And he's doing that and with our group. And I can't wait till we do a more intensive uh, group session, almost like a, a, a power session of drawing, you know? Um, so I'm, I'm talking to Don about that behind the scenes to see what we can put together um to bring people together and do that so i look forward to seeing that happen it will be like a group uh art lesson at 
session lesson. Yep. But that's the difference. The sessions, we talk, we have fun, we, we, you know, talk about farts, we talk about all kinds of bourbon, we talk about oh, food. Bobby. Yeah, yeah that, that's the <laughs> session. That's the that's the pop-up. That's the pop-upness of our art session. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, 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 yeah. So I just want to say thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining us. And uh, we really hope to see you. Um, I'm trying to figure out why I'm looking at it and we are frozen. I hope we're not frozen. We're not frozen on Twitch. So okay. uh, so it's still going on. I'm going to refresh, but I want to say to y'all, thank you for joining us. We appreciate you. We appreciate your support. Um, Check out, you want to get a t-shirt. We're going to have some new flavor, flavor t-shirts coming. Definitely, I put in a request for as soon as you open your eyes, it's on. I think that's, oh, I think that's golden. The other one too. I like the other one too. Break yourself to make yourself. Those two, you got to put that on there. That's a conversation starter. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Um, have a wonderful week. And... Uh, uh, let me get this out. Go Eagles. Yeah. Go Eagles. But most importantly, everybody, keep creating. Keep creating. Yeah. Yeah. Keep creating. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> I'm going to close this room. Thanks, y'all.